welcome to my channel welcome to this week's whip and chat now i will be doing this probably in two parts because it's late um but i just wanted to maybe make a start on recording so that i didn't have maybe a whole recording session and then editing session to have to do after work tomorrow because today is sunday night um looking for a pen so grab your cuppa i have literally just made my supper cuppa um and i have some very disappointing news there was double this in my glass and i knocked it very sad and it's dribbling as well it's really bad okay so and i have more bad news because you see my big bucket of tea there we go sophie broke my other mug so i have one holding my pens and the second one is now broken and this is my third one and it's got a crack on the top and it was like poopy doop so uh it might mean i have to well just use regular size mugs <laughs> it's very disappointing um it is what it is um i think this is lots of lines we'll start with the hourglass just because um, I might make a kind of mark of where we're going to go up to and kind of aim for that kind of area um, let's go with the uh, I think it's the thin blue line pen I think there's a blue line in there yeah somewhere along there this is from Redneck Beauty and um, the tip is from Everlasting pens and just your regular pen <coughs> Uh, Redneck Terry is now making the the metal tips if you're interested over in the States. BFF also do them and I think there's a couple of others that are now doing those but yeah this is Galaxy as you can see in picture. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll get my finger working. That way? No. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, ah, that way. All right. There. She's Galaxy. Um, Erica the Goober, if you're interested. I have no idea what the stock level is like on Diamond Art Club for her, if you're interested, but it is a Diamond Art Club painting. Um, if you enjoy purple, this is definitely the one that you need to get. There's that, and when I got Nova, I think I thought Nova was going to be much more purple than it is. Nova is actually a lot of blue, so if you like blue, Nova will win your heart because it's very, very blue. Um, just as a bit of an aside. Um, so where am I up to? Uh, the work front. Um, did I tell you that I put in for a transfer? Um, well, I heard that I hadn't got that. I didn't have one of the skills that was preferred it wasn't a requirement but it was definitely preferred so i knew it was a long shot once i knew that that requirement was there but it was like yeah it's not a requirement i'll see how we go but once i knew um i didn't get it oh it certainly wasn't disappointed it certainly wasn't you know banging my head against the wall i've had worse news in the last week than um not getting this job so it is all good um so I just continue plugging away where I am and having some fun, which means that I could potentially look at, you know, decorating the office, you know, with a bit more kind of gusto instead of, I don't know. I don't know why I never really um, settled into it. Um, yeah, funny kind of situation that actually I mean I haven't really decorated any of my office spaces um all that personalized um yeah I think it's just how it is because you know it's I, I mean I've got stuff but most of it's all work related and ugly or boring or something hmm. um yes 
Um, and as one of my new office mates has said, anything that you bring in, you've got to bring home again. And yeah, <laughs> I haven't done that either. So I've already got enough crap in the office, like hiding under tables. I actually had it hidden under a desk at one point, but the desk I have now, because it's one of those sit-stand desks, it's like everything is open to the world to see and scrutinize. And I don't know what it is about my workplace, but everyone feels like they can come in and look around your office and see what you've got and scrutinize. And it's like, hello, this is where we work. You know, bug off. We don't come and, you know, check out what you've you know have you moved your desk kind of it's really it's a weird weird bugbear um to see these people coming in and kind of going yeah you know you don't even talk to me outside of my room yet you come and go up at my room my space my workspace kind of it's just like go away you know if i felt that they cared it'd be a lot different but i you know, it's kind of like, no, you're just here to be nosy. Go away. Go be nosy. Just somebody who doesn't care. Anyway. Grumble, grumble. Um. So, yeah, this, um, th there was that. Uh, I actually had, um, Friday off last week because, um, my workload that I needed to do backup for suddenly disappeared. So when they disappeared, I said, I think I'll disappear. I've got ridiculous hours that I can take as what we call time off in lieu, toil. Um, it's not quite overtime. It's, you know, we get a day, a month, um, and my days have been cranking up, even though I've been on sick leave. How stupid is that? Um, yeah, so, um, I have over 60 hours of toil um, and I need to take them because you're apparently only allowed to have like 50 in reserve. Um, so yeah, um, I decided to take Friday off as toil and um, stayed home, which was good because, you know, we had stuff at home that I wanted to be closer to hubby with and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, there was that. Um, I have been um, getting out and caching with Sophie. She has been encouraging it. Like, she's actually kind of going, we, can we go geocaching? And tonight, Marcus made a map for her in the house and hid some things for her to ca find. And she went and hunted it down and found them so for a very first time of getting a map of the house and being told this is what you're looking for she figured it out he actually hid two things and um, she figured it out and went and found them so the plan is to potentially make things more difficult and maybe you know take it out to the garden or further afield maybe include some technology or stuff like that we'll see um, could be interesting where this goes though. Um, yeah, we'll wait and see for that one. Um, but she's a smart little cookie. But yeah, she broke my mug. I think it was this morning. She broke my mug and Marcus, you know, gave out to her and she was all kinds of sorry and came down to my room and was all upset saying she broke my mug. I thought she had broken one of our, um... name something Gordon Robert Gordon maybe Robert Gordon mug um, but no it turned out to be my large tea mug which was less of a deal because I've got you know odd ones um, I just happened to be able to get them for a steal of a price down at um, a toy shop in Salamanca um, they were like $13 for a mug that I would have been expecting to pay, you know, 30 odd dollars for. But these seem to be particularly cheap for the size. So I was quite happy to do that. Um, yeah. I was in um, one of our discounty kind of stores today and looking at mugs. Just because. And they've got 
much more angular kind of like soup mugs but they're also big mugs um and yeah they're not quite the same thing i really like oops the um i'll show you now in just a second let me oh um i like the hug shape the the rounded shape so when it's not too hot you can you know wrap your arms or uh, your hands around them i really like that kind of shape the um tactile feel of that um yeah really enjoy that so all my robert gordons are the same shape i've got a few other smaller mugs that are all the same shape and yeah i really really like them whereas hubby i think out of necessity had just brought those straight up and down sides um just in the white mug i think he got them for like 50 cents each kind of thing back when he was you know um poor and was able to buy them in bulk or something at the time you know just because you buy cheap when you don't have the money so he's got a stack of those that have been slowly dwindling in time um that he likes um they would be his go-to for his um bonox that he drinks but other than that no i don't like the straight side mugs so much um they're always what you get printed you know um if for you know whatever kind of thing um but just from a tactile point of view i like the huggy ones but that's just me um you get certainly you get more variety in um, patterns on those straight sided mugs than you do on the curvy ones but anyway um so yeah lots of geocaching um sophie and i would kind of head out for three at a time during the week um when i was off um I've had a couple of not founds with her. Um, <laughs> went for one. Actually, my pop some photos in of these because these are quite pretty. Went for one, and I was under the bridge looking for the cash, thinking it's kind of implying that it's out on the water. Yeah, that's not going to be it. Hmm. And then I don't know what made me actually think. Oh, it was. It was me reading the logs, and I actually went, "Oh, it's on the bridge." Because I was thinking, how am I going to get up there? Well, there was a set of stair stairs going up to it, um, next to it. Um, there was a trail of ants down the bottom of the stairs going all the way up the wall. And, you know, little ants. You're talking five millimetres and they're going up the little ant track. It was incredible watching them. Um, so, yeah, got a little picture of that too um the couple of days that we had been caching so one day we had been on um let's call it the western shore which is my side of the river um we were on this side of the river looking at a couple of caches to do with um what's called the bailey bridge the bailey bridge is um it's a floating bridge i don't know if they're called bailey bridges as a generic term i think they might be but something the army kind of uses so when the bridge fell down back in the 70s further down the river the army came in and did this floating bridge well at either end is still there so the bailey bridge on my end was one of the caches one day and then the um the next day yesterday we went over to the eastern shore to the other side so um it was all kinds of cool so we were you know just talking as we're walking bunnies running everywhere um getting out of the way um carrying sophie through some of the thorny bits um just chatting gorgeous uh rainbow over in cat which is the international catamaran shipbuilding company um a couple of sheds they're they're kind of low sheds where the catamarans come in and get serviced or built or whatever um my ex used to work with them 
um, so I know it well. And um, there's this beautiful low rainbow over the sheds. Uh, you know, so just chatting with Sophie about this. And then we're hearing this noise as we're walking around um, the technology park, which I'm not quite sure what's there, but holy cow, it's like Fort Knox. There's, you know, electric wiring, sorry, electric fencing inside, like inches inside the... Um, the mesh fencing, like the diamond mesh fencing. Um, so there's an electric fence just inside that. Uh, so, I mean, you could actually stick your finger through the mesh and be touching the electric fence if it's that close. Uh, not that you would want to do that. So I don't know what the heck is in here that's, you know, Fort Knox keeping out whatever riffraff. Like, I, I just don't know. I thought it said Nexus and I'm think it might be a Telstra call center or something. Anyway, we're hearing the cars then going over the bridge and at the end of each bridge is a expansion gap. So you hear the kujunk as it goes over the expansion things and Sophie's going, what's that noise? And I was trying to explain to her, you know, about the metal and how you know the metal will expand and all of that kind of thing and you know so that's why we're hearing the noise and then we walk over the ridge of um the road that had been dug out and i'm you know explaining how the the people who built the road had gone straight through rather than up and over the hill and all of this kind of thing it's just you know general chatting you know as we're walking and um, you know, there's a bunny kind of, you know, squirrel moment as well. And, you know, she's she's walking along. And um, so the next day when we go over the bridge, I said, hey, we're going over the bridge. You remember me talking about the metal expansion? You're going to drive over it. And it's kind of like, here it is, here it is. And, you know, make it a big deal of it. And she's going, then, you know, we're feeling the kujunk as we're driving over it. And she's, you know, so she's putting two and two together and she's, you know, getting the sound and everything else. Well, because we were at this cache that was just below the bridge, we were again hearing the noise. We got to see the bridge from underneath and then we got to go up onto the bridge and actually see the expansion gap. Like, we're here, Sophie. So I pick her up and we can hear the cars coming and, you know, when they go over the expansion gap, it's like, kajunk or kajunk kajunk because, you know, there's a front and a back of a car. Uh, so she's able to then visualize why the cars are making the noise. They've got the gap in the, you know, and just adding it all up in her head and kind of going, oh, right. It's, it's, yeah, all kinds of fascinating for her. And then go along the bridge, find a gap in the, um, in the bridge railing, um, reach in and find a strepsils tin. Um, I don't know if you have... It's a bit like an Altoids tin. So there's a, an Altoids tin equivalent um, is the cache on this particular bridge, which was all kinds of cool. Um, although there were some really weird... Like, the, when we arrived at the stop, there were two cars parked and a couple of lads in the back car chatting to each other. And when I'd gone to the other end of the Bailey Bridge, there was a couple of people in their cars and I'm like what the heck are you doing like one was just sitting there on his phone or outside of his car on his phone and the other one was tightening the nuts up on his four-wheel drive as if he was either going to go four-wheel driving or had just come off four-wheel driving or something weird um so yeah very strange characters I know and I'm wandering around with my three-year-old and um sitting on railings while I'm signing the cash that she's all kinds of, can I, I want to do it, I want to do it, and I want to put it back in, and I'm kind of going, it's windy, and oh, we, when we arrived at the river yesterday, there was what's called the Mona Roma, so we've got a museum of, Na museum of, it's not the Museum of Natural Art, um, Museum of New Art? Might be David Walsh anyway. He's the owner, founder, God. He is self-appointed, calls himself God. And I think his 
mistress is God's mistress is their car parking space titles. Um, something like that weird. Like, yeah. Anyway, he made his fortune gambling and then he got this museum off the ground and twice a year now in Hobart they run either the MoFo um, Winter Festival in June or the Summer Festival um, in December for us because we're backwards. Um, seasons are the wrong way around for us. So the Deep Winter Festival is all kinds of well, uh, questionable art. He actually last year, um, I think they had, they were going to slaughter a bull and have people dip their hands in blood and, I don't know, paint something. It was all kinds of trippy, weird shit. It was very much, um slanderous libelous art but just oddball kind of stuff these are international artists um one guy actually buried himself in the road for the duration of the thing i don't know five days or something buried himself under the road you know nobody could see him i don't think but he was there um, under the major road into hobart kind of thing all really weird um, kind of thing. There is a library in there that's, I think it's just called the White Library and every page of, every book in there is blank. Um, so it's just crisp white pages, like nothing in it. You know, th those kind of weird exhibits. He's got a car in the, um, in the front of the museum as you go in. I think it was supposed to be a Ferrari and it's been fatticized, so it's all kinds of, um, I don't know, um, you know the cartoons that are there with the fat wild animals and, you know, they're all kind of roly-poly kind of thing? It's like that. It's, it's, it's a red sports car that's been fattied up. It's all curvy and, you know, looks like it's bursting out of its skin kind of thing. Anyway, this is out in the forecourt. You're not supposed to touch it. Of course I did. Um, they've got a waterfall that you're supposed to be able to ring a number and you can change the words that fall down the waterfall. So you can actually, so it might say pride or sacrifice or, you know, you're supposed to be able to text this number and you can change the word to say something else. That doesn't happen. They had a poo machine, like a machine that literally made poo. Um, I think there was a few of them actually. Um, I don't know why you would want a machine that makes, that manufactures poo, but yeah. A poo machine. Uh, they had a wall of vaginas too at one stage. I was like, what the f Yeah. Weird, 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 off the wall kind of art. Yeah, I'm not into the weird shit art. Um, it's a little bit too space cadet -y for me. I like art that, uh, well, can make you think, maybe. But I like art that maybe looks kind of like it's supposed to. Um, that maybe is clever in how it does it. So he's got like a cement truck out the front of the gallery. And it's made out of um, mm, Victorian iron, like gates and wrought iron with the twists and the filigrees and all kinds of cool and it's supposed to be a cement truck. That's kind of cool. The art that I don't really like is things like Picasso and, you know, stuff that a three-year-old has potentially vomited up. Or it's got that stupid story like the esoteric, and I think I've said this about, you know, before. The esoteric, you know, the... Is that the word, right word even? Um, you know, the, the juxtaposition between you know so and so and so and so and you know whether or not the grass is blue or purple today or you know the, the oh, it's just artsy fartsy shit i hate that you know if it doesn't need the i don't know the weird story in my mind that's just me and it is it's just me 
you know, if you like the artsy farty philosophical claptrap, you know, but if if you've got a bedroom, there's an artist in London who has done this, right? They've got a bedroom. They've basically trashed it. It looks like a teenager's bedroom. And then they start pontificating about what it is and the meaning of it and blah. And it's just like, it's a fucking messy, it's a messy bedroom. You know, or it's a spilled carton of milk or, you, you know, it's that kind of building a story out of crap um, for the sake of just building a story um, as opposed to, you know, Chuck Pinson, here's a pretty painting and the eagle is representing blah, blah. And the, you know, the sun was, you know, hitting the water this particular day, you know, in just this magical fashion, you know, and you've got this gorgeous picture that I like, but the story of, um, you know, I don't know, the taming of the shrew for that picture. No, nah, not so much. Um, I just think it's a bit too kind of arty, Nancy pansy kind of weird. And it is, it's just weird. I'm just not into the bullshit. Um, you know, say what it is, because that's what it is. But, you know, there's no no issue with that, you know. If it's about pollution, then, you know, go for it. But it doesn't need to be some weird-ass sentence, you know, to say that. It's, does it? I don't know. I've gone to my fair share of galleries. I don't like poetry either, just as a, you know, heads up. Dad tried to use, get me into poetry for years and it was just not happening. Helen Steiner Rice and yeah, new, no, thanks dad. But yeah, I just, I read poetry, had to read it in high school. And um, I know it's been used for all sorts of political things and by golly, the chick who did the inauguration for um, Biden-Harris, she was amazing. Um, and some, ooh, I've had a drill go sideways in there. Um, there's some amazing political things can come out of poetry and particularly slam poetry. Um, it's a different kind of rhythm um, and feel. It's a bit more like uh, rap music without the um, without the rap, without the speed. But it's a more rhythmical way of talking. Uh, you know, it's not um, cat in the hat kind of rhyming or anything. But the way that they poets can express themselves, I don't know, that can be a little bit more kind of... I don't know, um, interesting, but it's, I don't know, it's almost, almost like it's a, uh, who brain consuming, you have to think, and maybe I just don't want to think too hard, um, yeah, maybe that's it, just don't want to think, don't want to be, um, put under pressure to have to, I don't know, stand up or be counted, I don't know, don't know, anyway. That's just me. And maybe the mood I'm just in tonight. Um, yeah. So this week in work, um, I have a light couple of days. I actually have a couple of appointments um, on those days though, so it's still busy. Um, and we're getting haircuts, which is like, yay, because mine is really getting a bit, um, split ends and all that kind of jazz. Nothing is going to change. I'm still going to have my hair up. You're not going to see any difference. Yeah. I get my hair cut like that. <laughs> my ex used to complain no end. You didn't look any different. It's like, right. That's great. He always wanted the dramatic hair change and the short hair and all that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, Hubby likes the long hair. I like the long hair. But I tend to wear it up just because it's more practical to have it up. Um, yeah, I'm one of those. 
Oh, what? Sorry, it's separating like teeth here. Oh yeah, this weekend, um, Marcus's cousins were in town. Cousins? Cousin was in town with his wife and kids and it was so nice to meet them, although I was a bit terrified too. Um, because, you know, meeting family for the first time. They live on the mainland um, and they'd come down for a wedding and birthday and um, yeah, it was so nice to meet them. They were lovely. Um, he was into cameras. Um, their boys were lovely. Um, yeah, it was just a really nice time with family. Um, so that was good. Considering that we haven't gone out for ages, if you know, Marcus and I we just don't tend to go out. Um, if we were going to have something to eat, you know, we'd make it ourselves. So, you know, our coffee is pretty good. Um, and we just don't add the expense to what we can already do. So I think we both made a point of ordering something that we can't or don't make ourselves. So he had waffles. I had uh, garlic mushrooms and the bacon was literally like a chunk of ham, five mil thick kind of thing. It was gorgeous. Um, and um, yeah, the boys even expressed how thick the ham was because their dad had bacon and egg on toast. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, and it was crowded. It was busy. You had to book. Um, so we had booked as soon as they said they were in town. So all of that just worked out really, really well. Um, timing was perfect. We dodged the showers and yeah, it was just a nice bit of a break. Came home and um, Sophie and I went out for the oh yesterday so yesterday was the eastern shore so yesterday was the other end where we got to see the Mona Roma yeah I got distracted with that catamaran that runs from the art gallery down to Hobart um so it was heading down so we parked the car and the ferry came into view and then it started slowing down because a ferry was parking at or not sorry not a ferry a freighter was parking at the zinc works which is what we were just across the river for um and that was under pilot and tugs so we got to watch all of that and a couple of opportunistic um seagulls landed and thought oh we're in for a feed because apparently this place is good for fishing um and they're you know eyeing us off kind of going have you got food have you got food kind of thing no so um, Sophie and I grabbed the cash and then she tore off <laughs> and went back to the beginning of the trail um, and yeah, we just watched the boats playing and um, got back in the car and headed to the next cash, got back in the car, headed to the next cash. That was a good day. Um, the first day to Friday when I was off, we went for a cash down at the west the eastern sorry the western end yes where i am and the first one was down at the radio control um place down the road and um, this is basically a go-kart track kind of thing miniaturized for remote control cars well um the container that i think it's on so the, the implication was that the cache was actually under the corner of a shipping container. That shipping container was prone to the road and it's the middle of the daytime and I'm going, I'm so vulnerable here. But, you know, everybody watching, nobody's watching. Or if they are, they're in a car and they don't, you know, they're not paying any attention to somebody who's shoving their hand under a shipping container. I need to get a mirror in my bag to be able to look up and under things. Um, so yeah, I um, I left that one pretty quickly after a very, very quick feel. Couldn't find anything. Um, so it was kind of like, yeah, Sophie, I'm not happy sitting here 
poking around a corner where somebody could be going, the hell is she doing? And call the cops on me. Um, so yeah, we headed off and we went to the next one, which was um, an eclipse tin. So a mint tin at the bottom of a sign. That was an easy grab. And I actually then drove to where I thought I might get through, but couldn't because it was a big fence. So I ended up driving back to where that was. And we could have ended up doing the loop of this technology park and um, and uh, we could have grabbed that cache, the sign one, as we were coming back down because it was right next to where I'd parked. So yeah, it was one of those things, but you know, getting two out of three. And to be honest, when I got to this cache that was in a tree, I think I just happened to be looking at the right angle, walked into it at the right angle because it was a mess of trees scrubby scrappy trees and I just happened to see the black bison hanging off the tree at the right way um, so I wasn't looking for long at all so that was kind of cool um, um, so yeah it wasn't a case of couldn't find necessarily what we were looking for um, I think there was another day I went out and could not find this thing and it was just like yeah this isn't happening um and i searched i think for well over half an hour i know i did a big search when i had mocha with me at the park and couldn't find one so usually what i do there is if i can't find one i'll find another one so that i'm not kind of going i didn't find any you know kind of it's quite dejecting when you don't find a cache that is supposed to be out there. And it's not supposed to be small either. So somebody actually, I've put it onto my watch list now and somebody's actually um, gone after me going, yeah, don't think it's here. Um, so it's been disabled and the owner is going to go check it out. So it's like, yay. So once we find out that it's still there, well, I'll go back and look. And if we find that it's gone missing, then... Um, you know, we'll see what happens, whether they disable it or they put a new box out. So that's how it's going to work out. Um, yeah, but uh, the joys of, of caching. And I think I showed you, um, a lot of people had got this. The um, Frisbee Golf the other week. The amount of people saying that they either know somebody who plays it and they're really good or they have played it themselves. I was amazed. Like, I did not know what this thing, the baskets were when I first saw them. I mean, I kind of figured out, oh, maybe Frisbee. But it was called Disc Golf. And I actually didn't know when I was driving up what Disc Golf might be. But when it turned out to be like Frisbee Golf, because Frisbee is apparently a brand name, which I didn't really twig um but yeah um the um the sport of throwing flying discs um into baskets oh it was really cool really really cool and i wasn't watching anyone playing it or anything i don't know if there had been a tournament that day or not there was a couple of cars up there but i think they're just walking or practicing or playing with dogs or something um but they have disc golf uh, once a month I think one of the particular Sundays um, a month they play um, it may be even the first disc golf course in Australia um, way back whenever it started it may have been the first one so before then they didn't have it so in Ireland we had frisbees as I say it might be like a brand like Converse instead of a sand shoe kind of term um, and I remember then getting a, a disc made of nylon with a weighted kind of edge. So it was a nylon piece of flat fabric and then the edge was like a beaded trim with weight in it. So it may have been <coughs> like a, um blind weights so you know how you can get blind weights that go down the bottom of your hanging blinds and um 
they're like they're like little lead weights but they they make this circle anyway i got this promotional thing from one of the servos in ireland called texaco and i don't know if texaco is a us brand or not but anyway texaco was the name of it the brand was on it it had a red trim you know white background with the texaco logo or something on it and they coined this thing the flying flipper well it was effectively a soft frisbee um and it was brilliant it was maybe eight inches across wasn't a foot like a frisbee was more like 12 inches across it was smaller than that bigger than six inches it was like tossing a small pizza and it flew really well it was brilliant i may even have it somewhere around it was really really cool but yeah because the frisbee name was taken they couldn't call it a frisbee they called it a flying flipper yeah but very handy to be able to throw into your bag scrunch it up um and uh, you know you you could stuff it into your back pocket kind of thing that it was that kind of cool um but yeah i used to play with frisbees in the summer in ireland and that's certainly what it reminded me of so yeah it was, it was nice nice to be reminded of <sighs> other days other days i'm just looking and seeing uh this yeah there is three well, time is ticking on actually i'm nearly at a full whip and chat time so um if i keep going for a few more minutes what i might do is then just edit it tomorrow after work and um, you'll have a video without any gaps or interruptions because sophie's asleep well <laughs> sophie was in bed the last i heard she was cackling and then when i went down to her down the hall um she was going shh which is funny because when we were doing the maps at the table marcus is going shh and i'm teasing and going sophie and she's going sticking her head around him going what i said shh and we'd be shushing each other it was hilarious she's a funny kid um yes so there was a bit of that and then i was watching a video that was on facebook or something um birds now i was watching the first one without sound but you could see what the bird was doing because it was a cat outside the window and the bird was inside it was a green parrot not a budgie but a green parrot what of some kind a pale green parrot and it was ducking down behind the window ledge and going peekaboo and will pop up <laughs> and the cat was outside the window just watching this parrot going peekaboo and he was saying the peekaboo and then there was another bird another parrot again because parrots talk um and the parrot was um sticking oh no the the owner actually said cry like a baby and this thing starts wailing like a child like a baby wailing and she eventually gives it a treat and i was like oh that's a really really dumb thing to be teaching a parrot to say because bosker the cockatoo the family cockatoo he trained himself i suppose to um gain attention by being a phone and he'd ring <laughs> you know yeah so wailing like a baby was what this bird was trained to do and then there was another one that was saying um i love yous and kisses to its babies oh it was hilarious um, and Marcus is just tittering away going birds are so cool they are the coolest of pets he used to have a budgie that would sit on his head under his hoodie and um, when it was too hot it would throw the hoodie back and when it was cold it would pull the hoodie forward on top of his head and he drove up to Launceston or something the top of the state with the budgie on the head and you know all that kind of thing I think he had a friend babysit it and it flew out no his mum i think let it fly out the door one day because he he never clipped its wings so he used to train it with a um ha, not a halogen the the light tubes because you couldn't get a grip on the light on those slippy bulbs so yeah he'd train it that way 
Um, yeah. <laughs> um, he was highly amused by... Ooh, wrong one. Where did I put that? Oh no, that's the right one. Um, yeah, highly amused. But he didn't want me to get him a parrot or budgie when we were pet shopping. Because um, I think we had Sophie at that point. So he, he already knew he was busy. Um, even though he'd love it, he said, nah, the bird poo up on the railings or in the house is just not, not nice. And he wouldn't want it in the cage, which fair enough. Um, the next door neighbours have, I think they only have the one parrot that I know of. Um, they've now got bunnies and chickens and all sorts. So they're busy with their menagerie. Um, but yeah, he likes watching the videos when I get the videos on whatever social media stream they come in on. Um, has a bit of a giggle and goes, oh, they're so cute. Love birds. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'd really want to get you a bird if, you know, if I thought that that was a something that would make him happy, I'd get him a bird. But anyway, everything else lives outdoors here. Cats and the dog. Um, the dog managed to slip his collar. I don't know what he was doing, but um, his chain was across the, over to the trees next to him, and um, he just came running up to the front door going, hey ma. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. So I don't know if he pulled too hard, got his head stuck, or there was a skippy he was after, or what he was doing. Crazy dog. But hadn't gone running anywhere. Um, so that was pretty cool. Sometimes he's gone off for a run or I've found him the next morning having been for a run because he's wet or something and he wouldn't have been wet if he was actually in his kennel. Cheeky boy. Him and Latte used to go off on adventures from our old home though. So yes, I'm kind of used to the lunacy of him running off. Um, yeah. Hey, I finished chapter two of Harry Potter. You'll see it if you're interested in my floss tube for May, whenever I get around to doing that, to be honest. Um, or you'll have seen it on Instagram if you follow me on Instagram. Um, but yeah, it's like, it was the one with the snitch and the seeker, um, jersey and the arena for Quidditch. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm finished. Um, yeah, because the introduction, like I'm still going with the blank, blinking introduction. Um, I haven't finished the envelopes because doing the envelopes is just so bloody boring. Um, I think I have four more envelopes to do, which isn't many. And then I've got to do the seals. So the seals are in either red or green. And it just, it's kind of like the coverage just isn't really there for the, um, this floss, um, 746. It's a light color and I don't know if I'm going to have to either go over it, you know, with another, um, single or something. I don't know, just to make it fill in. It could be my stitching too. That's the other issue. Um... But yeah, there's a, and there's a lots of fractionals on the edges of the um, envelopes as well. So that's a bit off-putting, just because they're fiddly. Um, and I use a ballpoint needle. So getting into the fractional stitch is like, ugh, you know, I'm, it's just not piercing whatever. I'm having to kind of wiggle it through um, and make a path that's not there so yeah it's it's just slow going on that but I'm nearly there so I was actually messaging a friend tonight kind of saying you know I'm actually up to date this time last year 
um, coming into May. May was, every second month is a month that uh, Stuart would give us behind the scenes rather than giving us another piece of the pattern. So we were getting pieces of the pattern every two months. So I'm kind of up to date a year late um, and still have the introduction to do. So I'll have the introduction finished by the end of May because it's now the, well, it's only the 25th. I've actually, well, I've already started chapter three. Um, I can't do anything with the rest of my salves. I'm up to date on all of them, um, except, sorry, not all of them. My black work is behind. Move, these drills are not getting out of the way. Um, my steady thread is behind. I did two blocks of that today at my stitching uh, day. And um, so I've got three weeks, I think, to catch up on, maybe two. Um, so that's better than it was because I did two today. So I did poppies and uh, magnolia. So that was kind of cool. Magnolia was really slow because I used four separate colours throughout the whole thing and trying to get the next section with that thread wasn't going to be working counting wise as easily so I'd carry it and then go and do the next bit and then park it and then go and do the next bit and you know kind of go from there so it was a little bit more tedious whereas the poppies because it was only two colors I was able to go around with the outsides all in the one color and that was much much quicker and I only had the center of the poppies then to finish when I got home when I was making dinner and um, yeah so I'm getting there with that and I, then I finished peppermint purple for last week as well and um, so peppermint purple is up to date um, so I've got five days before five six days even um, because autumn lane stitchery don't do their drop until the second of the month for me um, and then the others, there's one of them I think that does it on the first of the month because they're in the UK, so they're a little bit even further ahead. Um, so yeah, I'll get one that might be Clouds Factory and then the others slowly peter in. Clouds Factory I'm expecting to be roughly a thousand, fifteen hundred, sorry, more like fifteen hundred stitches in their piece um dark queen of the sea could be quite complicated more like 2000 um it isn't a searchable pattern unfortunately aaron doesn't have a pattern that he can do the bits in within pattern keeper so i use it to mark but you can't search your pattern or anything or highlight and all that kind of thing except as you put your finger on it so better than nothing certainly better than paper really really better than paper um yeah so there's that um how much more of these mics have i got yeah so it'll all get crazy again at the beginning of the month so i'm kind of feeling like i've got nothing to do sort of now I'm not. I've got five days left in the month and five days to do the black work, which effectively I could knock over um, at least one a night. So it's still going to give me other nights or time at the end so I can get the flower block done maybe in daylight and then get the um, cross stitching um, the letters from Hogwarts um, do more of that in the evening I do have to have a think about whether or not I want to put background in for the Quidditch match and people have also done backgrounds with the magical creatures so chapter 3 the one that I'm on so Stuart didn't put in grass and people did and I think it's not full coverage but it does make it fuller so 
I'm debating doing that so I'm gonna have to troll the group and see what colors people use but basically all they're doing is just a bit of like um, confetti confetti texture into the grass or the sky and that kind of thing so it's a little bit of freestyling which is a little bit scary but that's it's okay we'll make it work I just didn't want to have it flat like non-textural grass or anything um, but yeah, I can't go too crazy with my back stitching either to make it like a bothy kind of thread picture. That's that would look all kinds of weird. So yeah. That's that. Um I don't know. Spent a fortune on yarn last week. Um on Forbidden Fibre Bridgerton stuff. So that's gonna be all kinds of cool think I'll get that in June. I'm now eagerly awaiting my Black Needle Society Up All Night box, which is a retreat box for the end of May. I think it is. I can't find the dates. Funny noises. Um... So yeah, I'm hoping that that's not going to be too far away. I, Liza said, well, I may not have said, actually, because I haven't done a whipping chat with you. Um, but my Black Needle Society on-the-go stitching box came on the, I don't know, something like the 20th of April, which was after all the photo bits could be done and all of that kind of jazz. So yeah, it was like getting the box but not benefiting from the photo competitions or anything in a timely fashion. So it's just worldwide shipping at the moment. It's just going so slow. Um, no guarantee that it will be here on time, but we'll do my best. Um, I need to actually catch up with my Harry Potter sampler. I think I've got the threads. Yes, I have, because it's um, Colorworks and Week Styleworks. Um, or Gentle Arts sampler and Week Styleworks um, for the floss for that. So I've got those. I think there's only a couple of colours I'm missing. Um, so other than that, I'm, I'm all ready to go. It's kind of like, come on, already, already, already. Um, yeah. So I need to, I need to actually try and book some time off for that too. Um, so I've got, well, I won't be up all night necessarily because my night is going to be, um, day, but Now, just making life hard for myself. Um, I'll be up in the American night, but having a couple of intense days of being online or whatever, I might just take the Monday off work. So I'm not wrecked. It's a bit like having the DP-a-thons, um, which I have no idea what's happening about this year. I haven't heard of any this year. Um... But there's a retreat coming up. Oh. Okay. I'm going to have to stop because my computer is running out of brains. And I'll figure that out. I'll be back to say goodbye. Alright. <laughs> nice bit of maintenance there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll get um, some days organized that I can just kind of relax with that but oh yes yes the retreat the um Michigan retreat is on like imminently oh I've just realized there were I was working on these somewhere um yeah the Michigan retreat is happening and Marissa was packing to go and it's like oh exciting stuff for you guys um and then the oops or maybe it wasn't the Michigan retreat. Maybe Michigan was the second one. And I uh, can't remember where the other one was. But anyway, there was two retreats. But one's happening sooner than later. And you guys get to meet everyone. It's like, oh. Oh, and Marissa was saying 70 people were going. Like, oh my god. That's insane. Um, yeah, that's really, really cool, like, 
70. And okay, there's going to be the big name um, YouTubers there, but there's also going to be so many people that don't have channels that come and watch and come and support, comment in our um, chats all the time. And, you know, we know their names, but don't know faces and all that. And I was just like, oh, this is going to be so cool to just see people meeting up. Um, again and yes there's going to be lots of in jokes and we're all going to feel left out fear of missing out kind of stuff happening um some people are going to be probably happy that they're not going because you know covid but you know if that's something that you're willing to do apparently they've got to wear masks the whole time uh yeah i can't think of anything i would hate more than having to sit in my craft masked up and not actually end up hot and bothered by the end of it. I think I'd be kind of going, okay, I'm going to my room just to breathe. Um, yeah, I don't think a good deal. Um, with that, so I think whoever has chosen to go, good on you, because that's an endurance in itself. Um, but people, and the other thing with having masks on, you don't get to see faces, you don't get to see laughter, and I mean, you get to see some, but yeah, that's, we're spoilt in Tassie, where we don't have to wear masks. Oh. And now it starts to play silly buggers, because it's late, and I just want to get this finished, and it's just like, come on. Um, yeah, we, um, we haven't had to wear masks. So, as a community, we're, we're very spoiled. Um, because we haven't got it here. Um, and haven't had it here, except for one period. And even then, it was just like, self-isolate. Um, in the early days. Yeah. So, exciting stuff. Looking forward to hearing stories from that. Um, although I haven't been watching as many... Um, YouTubers, I'm probably getting back into it a little bit more. I've just been, I, th I think, just feeling a bit mentally exhausted. And I don't know why. I don't know what's going on with my head. Um, but I certainly wasn't as um, interactive um, as I had been. I guess, in a way, it's kind of like um, going on a diet. You know, I had an influx of YouTube and everything else and um, and just kind of went cold turkey almost after Christmas and um, haven't really got back into the crazy again, you know, of, you know, so-and-so is live and joining in and there's so many more channels these days it's almost impossible to keep up with um but in saying that i'm kind of going what am i going to watch on youtube tonight and where is the content um if you know where it is please tell me please share um seriously <laughs> it's like oh where is everyone so yeah i think i'm done i'm done enough it's it's just boring purple hair it's it's just going to be lots of boring purple hair for a while. I do have a tiny gap here. But I'm going to leave it for you guys. And say goodnight. Um, and get my other video editing and up and out. Oopsie. This is what you don't want to happen. The front is um, a different kind of coating. And it sticks, so you, that's why you can't flip these the wrong way around. But yeah, there she is. We were, um, the bottom is just here. Get in screen, there. Oh, no, it's not going to fit because my screen's been zoomed in for you. But yeah, it's, you know, it's all on the board. There's not much to go. Probably a third. But yeah, look, I finished her all last week, I think off camera. Um, and there's a couple of drills. 
uplifting. You can feel. Some of the ABs are a different shape. So you might feel ABs a bit higher than other ones, but no, that's, I think, about them. Yay! Cool. All right, um, I'll let you go. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, now I'm talking an awful lot about geocaching. Um, get out and do it if you can. I tell you what, you guys in the States, you're spoilt for amazing geocaches. Um, you're not just getting little micros that are like pen lids. You're getting containers with toys and gadgets and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. If you get a chance, just just do a few if you, if you like it. Happy enabling. Mm. Sorry, definitely not sorry. It brings in incidental exercise and all of those kind of fun things. Your treasure hunting with... GPS, treasure hunting with your phone, um, and kids love it, and blokes can love it because it's gadgets and it's puzzles and it's big tough men and, you know, it, it's, um, I think yeah, girls love it because it's puzzling and it's solving and it, you know, makes us feel like we can, you know, win the world. Yeah, it's awesome. It's an awesome, awesome thing. It's kind of like orienteering and treasure hunting and GPS without feeling like you're a complete idiot um, and can't follow a map. Although maybe if you can't follow a map, you might get stuck. I don't know. Yeah. Um, all right. I will see you during the week. Um, you might get more vlogs. I'm, I'm thinking of doing some more vlogs um, just to, I don't know. See how I go. Maybe take you geocaching in full video um, rather than just kind of snippets. But we'll see how we go. Um, I'm very conscious of location, even though nobody else is in Tasmania, but I'm conscious of location and showing hides and showing where they are and all that kind of thing because it's a bit of a kind of, you know, find it yourself. You know, what what's the point in me showing you where it is? It's that kind of thing. Um, but you get to maybe see the excitement that I feel when I'm looking for a tin in the middle of trees because my husband doesn't get it. You know, why would he? Um, but I get excited or I solve a puzzle and it's kind of like, yay, I solved a puzzle. And it, it's an achievement. It's, it's a, I did a thing. Yeah. So that's just me. I'm weird. All right. Um, but yeah, look after yourselves. Um, it's coming up to May uh, it's the last Wednesday in April <sighs> four months gone we're already hurtling through 2021 <sighs> wow alright I will see you in the next video take care of yourselves, bye for now may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.